I know what you're thinking. Well, the Protestant Reformation. The point of the Protestant Reformation was to get rid of all the crazy stuff the Catholics did. Get back to the pure faith as Jesus taught it to the apostles, like the early Christians. Guess what? Do some homework. How their lives overlap each other in our timeline. Here's Jesus, who dwelled among us until about A.D. 30. And then in the purple background, we have the apostles, Peter, Paul, and John. And what's so exciting to me is how the lives of the apostolic fathers intermingle with the apostles. For example, Jesus taught John, and then John taught Polycarp, and in turn, Polycarp taught... Do some history. The early Christians were Catholic. How's it going? All right, go ahead. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's talk. Pretend that I'm like, uh, uh, you know, just a... Uh, uh, onlooker. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Can you sit there? Uh, and I okay. can talk to you. All right. Oh, you're the man. I'm so glad you came. Because it's right. so hard pretending like people are watching. Yeah. All right. All right. So this, the, this whole video, this whole video is about uh, explaining this... Because the number one problem in Christianity, like the reason there's not more Christians, mm -hmm. is because there's so much disunity. Okay. First and foremost are bad Catholics who are ignorant of what the church teaches and why they believe it and what the Bible says. Okay. And so a lot of times they will set a bad example for other people. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, I met this Catholic who says it's okay to go get drunk with all their friends. And, you right, know. Right, right. And, and then the second big problem is the disunity among Christians together as a whole. That would be in the Protestant denominations, where there's, there's 33,000 different Christian denominations, and they all claim to be going on the Bible alone, but how come there's so many disagreements within them if the Bible alone is sufficient? Correct. And then so, from that, we have to kind of like get it all straightened out so that we can all be united so the other faiths like the Muslims and Jewish people or people who are atheistic might be able to say, hey look, we should be Christian. Right. But nobody's going to want to be a Christian if, nobody, if the Christians themselves can't even agree on what to believe, right? Right, right, exactly. Right. So, the, the point of this video is to help people realize what, what Scripture is actually saying as far as Scripture is concerned. Mm -hmm. So, like the idea that that we should go by the Bible alone isn't in the Bible. By the Bible alone isn't in the Bible. The Bible alone isn't in the Bible. And, and a lot of times Protestants will ask a Catholic, and the Catholics should know the answer to this, but they don't because of their own ignorance or because they weren't taught properly. They say, where is that in the Bible? Why do you do this? This is not in the Bible. This is not in the Bible. Where is it? The, but the entire foundation for the sole pillar of their faith and understanding, it, it itself is not in the Bible. Okay. Nowhere in the Bible does it say scripture alone. It does say in 2 Timothy 3.15 that the scripture is God-breathed, it's inspired by God, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting, and training in righteousness. And that's true. It is useful for that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say scripture alone is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting, and training in righteousness. St. Paul directed the Thessalonians, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. And to the Corinthians he wrote, I commend you because you maintain the traditions as I delivered them to you. But where can we find this fullness of the faith? Like in 2 Thessalonians 2.15, it says, Hold fast to the traditions which we have taught you both by word of mouth and by letter. Okay. And that any time that apostles mention the word scriptures in the New Testament, the ones that they're referring to are the Old Testament scriptures. Okay. Because at that time, the Bible wasn't even, even composed. They had the Old Testament. When Jesus was around, they had the Old Testament. And then it wasn't until like the year 390 that the Catholic Church canonized or voted on which ones were definitely inspired by God because these were written by apostles. Mm -hmm. And that was in the year 390. Okay. But Jesus died in the year 33. Right. So the church existed without scriptures and without like biblical... He like, died in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, he, di yeah, right. he died yeah, in, in, right. in like the year 33. Okay. So for 360 years... The church was going around teaching and preaching without any Bible, without any scripture, just using the Old Testament wow. and using what the apostles were handing on. Right. So if they were mentioning anything about scripture when there are letters to different people in different communities, then they would have been only referencing the Old Testament scriptures. Okay. Question. Yes. The apostles, mm -hmm. they were given messages from God mm -hmm. for them to write that. Well no, well, no, no, they weren't actually. They weren't. No, no. So when Jesus came, Jesus came and, and he taught them. Oh, he, okay. he didn't the come. Twelve disciples. Yeah, the twelve apostles. Okay. He, he he didn't come and say, "Hey guys, write this stuff down." And he okay. didn't. He he didn't write anything down. Okay. He wanted them. He wanted to teach them, and to teach others. Jesus taught his twelve apostles and promised to send the Holy Spirit to guide them into all the truth. The apostles faithfully carried Jesus' message to the whole world. But how did the gospel spread? 
St. Paul told Timothy, What you have heard from me, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. They thought that, that Jesus was going to come again soon, but he didn't. He wasn't, they were like, where is where's Jesus? Has not coming back yet? Yeah. And they noticed that the other apostles are starting to get killed. Mm -hmm. And so they realized we better put this in writing mm -hmm. just in case he doesn't come back anytime soon. Wow. And so that's when they started having the different writings. And then eventually what the church says, look, these are good. These are sacred documents. Let's compile them. And, and this will be like the New Testament. Wow. And we'll, okay. we'll compile that with the Old Covenant and be like the Old Testament and the New Testament together. This will make up everything we believe. So it can be a little confusing. It is very confusing, yeah. Know, because of the two errors. It, it is, it right, is. Right. It's to, very confusing. To take positive on, wow, you know, they they were saying one thing, and then Jesus came around, and they combined it all, like, yeah. it together. Because so throughout the Old Testament, the Jewish people, as time is going on, they're realizing more and more who God is. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to get a better understanding of what's going to happen when, like, their Savior comes. Especially when the miracles and stuff Yeah, appear. exactly, exactly. Yeah, right, right in their face. They're like, whoa, yeah. there is a God. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. People sit think now, well, the Protestant Reformation, that was like getting rid of all the stuff that the church added so we can get back to, to the heart of what, what's important here. Mm -hmm. And like how they were the early Christians when Jesus was first around. Like, how, what did they believe? Mm -hmm. Like, this is what we were. But what they don't realize is that the early Christians didn't have a Bible. Mm -hmm. The early Christians, and, and there's some documents that uh, I'm going to present in the video. The, the, the early Christians were Catholic. They believed in the Eucharist. They believed in confession. They had bishops. Mm -hmm. The seven letters of Ignatius. They're more valuable than gold or dollars. You know what they do? They pull back the curtain of time and they give us a glimpse into the life of the first century Christians. How did Bishop Ignatius worship with his people here in Antioch almost 2,000 years ago? That question was very important for me and the answer helped convince me that the Catholic Church teaches and practices the same thing today as the church taught and practiced in the first century. For example, did Ignatius believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist? You bet he did. Listen to his own words. Some people even abstain from the Eucharist because they will not admit that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Savior Jesus Christ. And what about the leadership in the church? The apostles had learned from Jesus, and Ignatius learned from the apostles, and then handed on their apostolic tradition. And he insisted on the three levels of holy orders, a bishop with his priests and deacons. Again, listen to his own words. Take heed to have but one Eucharist, for there is one flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ, and one cup that brings union in his blood. There is only one altar, as there is one bishop, along with the priests and the deacons. And we can see throughout history that you can trace back every single pope that's ever been all the way back to Peter. Wow. Early writers such as Origen, Eusebius, and Jerome said that Clement eventually met up with the Apostle Paul and became one of his fellow workers, and that this is the Clement that was praised in Paul's epistle to the Philippians. It reads, They have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Eusebius writes, Clement was the third successor of Peter and had seen the blessed apostles and conversed with them and still had their preaching ringing in his ears and their authentic tradition before his eyes. Clement was an apprentice, learning, listening, and watching. Here we see Peter sitting with Clement. Early testimony says that Clement was ordained by Peter himself and then Around the year 90, Clement inherited the chair of St. Peter in Rome. As Bishop of Rome in the year 96, Clement wrote a famous letter to the church in Corinth. The Corinthians still had serious problems even after St. Paul wrote his letters. Even though the Apostle John was probably writing his gospel from Ephesus around the same time, the church in Corinth looked to Peter's successor in Rome to sort out its problems. Like this one pastor, you know, like the Baptist church, you know, that I went to, he was like, well, don't idol the cross, don't idol statues. Yeah, yeah you don't worship it. Like, like it's just a holy like reminder that. to remind right, you. Right, yeah. exactly. 
So, you know. They don't know really what, what the Catholics believe. Part of that is because most Catholics don't know what they believe because they're not getting proper like education. But a lot of times people say, oh, those, they worship Mary. Oh, they, they do this and that. Oh, they worship statues. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, you know. Right. But in reality, like, we don't worship statues. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, hey, Statue of Liberty, let me worship you. Yeah, Ooh, right. you are so beautiful. Right. Oh, hail Statue of Liberty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, see, so there's like, misinformation in so many right. places. We need to have better right. communication. Because, like, I come up Baptist mm-hmm. and now I'm Methodist. Mm-hmm. But being around working in this environment, with the, in the Catholic environment, I kind of be trying to, you know, read up and trying to figure out you know, a little bit about it, but I'm, it, it's a whole lot. It's a lot of information. It's a whole lot of it information. Is. And um, I give you props for what you're doing. It's something that's really, wow, it's deep. It is, it it's is. Deep. Mm-hmm. So that's been a real blessing. Well, keep up the good work. Well, I appreciate young man. it, man. I think you've done a very good well, thank job. You. I God appreciate bless it. you. God thank bless you, okay? Take care. All right, all right. We be talking about Def-